You watch any of my interviews in the past, you know who my next guest is. One of the best in the world at 135 pounds, Jesse Arnett, the big cat back here on the program. Jesse, how's it going, man? It's good, brother. It's always good to hear your voice. That must mean time. It's oh, time to time fight. To hop age again, right? So, uh, how you been? Doing well. No complaints. A good start to 2021 for me. I know there's a lot of crazy stuff happening. We don't need to get into that. But you're actually in Abu Dhabi right now because you're fighting next week for UAE Warriors. Uh, you're fighting uh, the former, I think it's the former Brave champ, right? Uh, alias Budegzam, I think is how you say it. I was checking out last night how to pronounce it or something. How do you say it? You, you know you... It's a tough one. I think it's Elias Budizam. Budizam. He's an Algerian fighter who's based out of France right now. And... Uh, a lot of experience. He's a 27 year old kid, and he, he's got a he's got quite the experience for a young man. He does. We'll get into the matchup in a sec because there's a lot to talk about that. But uh, you know, kind of give people an idea. How long have you been in Abu Dhabi? Because you obviously flew up from Calgary. Yeah, I've been here since uh, the 31st. So I, tomorrow's tomorrow's my eighth day. I actually go for my my third Corona test tomorrow. I had one before I left. I had one when I landed. I'll have another one tomorrow, and I'll probably get one or two more before I hop in the ring. So, so this stuff's craziness. Um, I know it's good that they're taking every precaution, but uh, Abu Dhabi is running much smoother than North America. Let's just say that. I bet. Yeah. No, I'm sure they're taking every precaution possible. Are you down there by yourself, or are you with like uh, you know some teammates? Like, how are you getting through this? Because that's tough to be there since, like you said, New Year's Eve. You know that cats are. Uh, domesticated animals come on bro. <laughs> i'm Fair by enough. myself yeah. i have a friend who i haven't met yet that i know through my buddy vlad the you know vlad the russian commentator for the of course UFC. i know vlad one, one of the best yeah. one of the best in the business vlad's awesome uh he hooked me up with uh steven who's in dubai jaguar and uh we've been talking a lot so steven's gonna corner me but yeah i'm a man on a mission or i would should we say a cat on a mission i'm cat on uh, a mission yeah trying to uh, live the dream, right? What can I say? And there's there's a couple other, well, there's a bunch of North American fighters in here, a couple Canadians, right? Uh, yourself, uh, Louis Jourdain. Uh, they had Eric Spicely listed as a Canadian, but I, he trains at TriStar, but I'm pretty sure he's American. Um, and uh, and actually, I just talked to, to, to William Sparks yesterday, Starks yesterday. He's going to be on this card as well. So there'll be a couple other fighters there I'm sure you'll probably get to know. I know you have to stay away from them, but at least you'll know that there's some other uh, North American fighters on the card, right? Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, Good news for Jordan too, because he has been unactive, right? And, yeah. Uh, since TKO fell out, and he's a young prospect. And then, yes, I heard this Eric guy that they live. Hey, he trains in Montreal, so we'll just call him Canadian, right? Sure. Yeah. Why not? Actually, I more, think. Yeah. Go ahead. The more, the merrier. Eh? It's going to be fun. It's nice to see that uh, UAE Warriors is bringing in uh, world class talent from all around the world. And uh, I'm super excited for this show. It's it's Khabib's dad's memorial show. Yeah. And uh, from what it looks like, there's a lot of international talent on this card from top to bottom. And smart booking, right? Night before Holloway and Cater. So you're already in Abu Dhabi. Like, it's just another reason. Like, like they should, if you're a regional show and you've got, you know, you know the UFC's coming to town, you should be putting on a show the night before because you know fighters are going to be in town. It's a good way to kind of just, you know, remind people that there's other stuff going on outside of the UFC. So I think it's uh, it's pretty cool that you guys are going to be on this card the day before. 100%. Uh, super close to Fight Island and uh, all my medicals are in. I'm ready to go. Anything go. happens, I'm ready to go. Yeah, just keep that in mind if anyone's watching. Uh, let's quickly talk about your last foot against Pedro Souza. Uh, you know, I know you would have liked the finish, but you must have been happy getting another dominant win like that. Yeah, it felt good. Uh, he was a very tough guy. You know, I hit him with clean shots a number of times, and I, I was a little bit surprised. Very tough, very durable. Uh, it was a big win, and uh, I was proud of myself from that. I, I seen some things we did well, and... Uh, I took that back to Calgary. I got right into the gym because we weren't on lockdown yet. And uh, I started going back to my old ways. And that, that was uh, staying in the gym and uh, making another push here. Uh, this is a catch weight, right? 141 is what I was seeing. Uh, is, is, was that something you had both agreed on or did he want it? Because I know he has fought at featherweight recently in terms of his last couple of fights. Uh, the, my man, they, the matchmaker offered us this fight at 64 kilos and uh man i'm a hundred I'm, I'm a perfect 140 pounder i've been taking advantage of uh, the buffets over here and they've been treating me good um i'm walking 
I can make 147, 148, 49 after training, but I'm walking like 155, 157 pounds right now. So I'm in a good position for 140 pounds. Uh, at the end of the day, he's a bantamweight for yeah. real. Like he's fought bantamweight. He's not that big. Um, I think he just can fight at 45 because he's talented and doesn't like making that cut to 35. Who does? But 140 is perfect for me. If I could pick a weight class, it would be 140, 141 pounds. So uh, I'm happy with the catch weight and uh, I'm excited for next Friday night. And I don't think people realize how much those five pounds do really make a difference or six pounds in this case uh, with, you know, a fighter trying to cut that weight. Like you guys will be at your best. I mean, like you said, he's a bantamweight as well. We're really going to see like a true fight in this one because you guys aren't draining as much to, to make the weight, right? Exactly, man. It's those last five pounds you got to earn. You know that old commercial? Mm -hmm. Get the last 10 pounds or whatever, but it's truly the last five pounds that that, uh, that really are tough. And, uh, hey, I'm excited to get in there with another world-class competitor, and uh, let's do it at 140 pounds. I'm fine with that. And just to give a, you know, an idea on your opponent, uh, Elias uh, Budegzam, he has fought, you know, Wh- Whale Watson, who's a UFC vet. He actually lost his title uh, in Brave to Bubba Jenkins, who's, uh, you know, a Bellator vet, quite talented guy. And his last fight was against Austin Arnett, a-, a UFC vet who you might remember actually fought in Calgary. Um, actually, he fought Hakeem, right, uh, in-, in Calgary yeah. when-, when we saw each other the last time I think we've seen each other, which was when we had lunch uh, just near the arena at uh, in Calgary, right? That was the last time we saw each other. So uh, this-, this guy's much, like, pretty established. I'm sure that that must get you excited knowing that you're fighting a guy that, that has fought legit competition like you have like it's been nothing but tough competition for you as well 100 percent on paper this is this is fight of the night um yeah he 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 had his way with austin arnett uh yeah. other than the the eye pokes and and the points getting missed at the end it was a little bit of a controversial third round but uh he controlled austin arnett and what are the chances in this fight game probably one in a million of fighting both our nets back to back. That's We're right. The in this game. And this guy's got us spell back to back. <laughs> it's crazy. By the way, do you remember when Austin Arnett fought Hakeem and they released uh, UFC Canada, like put your Twitter handle instead of Austin's. You remember that happened? Everyone's like, Jesse's fighting Hakeem. What? That's crazy. Remember I, that know. That was I know. And then Austin even tweeted the UFC back. Come on guys, get this right. <laughs> yeah. Get the right Arnett in there. Yeah. I know that that's funny. Um, you talked about training camp a bit there. Who did you get to work with? I know you in the past you've worked with Curtis DeMars. Uh, who are some of the training partners you've had leading into going to Abu Dhabi? Well, in Al- Alavanca, really my, my jujitsu gym has been home base. Uh, my boxing gym has been shut down. Um, I've been working with my Padman Johnson in my basement at my house. I have a little gym at my house. Uh, lockdowns and quarantines man it's been an interesting year as as you know um tim blanchard and the guys at avalanca we we would arrange some time for some professionals and we'd get in there and uh i got some good training and and i had a lot of experience this year i had that jiu-jitsu super fight i had that fight with adam mcdougall early in the year and then i capped the year off nicely with pedro suzo so it's pedro Souza, excuse me um i had a good year I got some solid training in where Elias is strong would be on the floor. I think I had my best year in the gym with sports jujitsu. So, and the guys on my team, they're a bunch of killers, man. They're, they're ankle biters. They're going, they're, they're all new age. They sit on their butt and they say, let's go. Right. So I'm used to that high level new age jujitsu and, uh, where Elias is strong. I have good partners at home and, uh, we did our homework early I'm always going to show up in shape. Um, I've been in this hotel for the last eight eight days, doing twice a day on the cardio. Because I haven't done a lot of sparring in the last two weeks, my body's healed up. I feel fantastic, man. Like With my experience, um, my age of the game, I don't need to be sparring and banging lots near course. the end. Once you've done it once, you've done it. You know what I mean? Like You've had those reps in already, right? 100%. 100%. It'd be nice this weekend. I, uh, tomorrow I get my final test. I, I can get out and... I'm meeting up with uh, Pablo. He's a Galvalo from Atos affiliate here in town, and like world world champion grapplers they have there. I'm gonna hop in some grapplers guards and familiar myself a little bit because it's been a couple weeks, and it's like riding a bike, man. Three four seconds in, it's back to normal, and uh, just uh, the only place Elias is dangerous is experienced, but 
he goes for things on the ground. Uh, he's not afraid to put himself in a bad position almost to look for a submission, and he's tricky. He, he's he got – he'll pull guard, man. It's, it's uh, 2020, 2021, and this guy's pulling guard still, so he's got to be a little bit confident in his skills. How is the weight cut going? Uh, you mentioned eating a bit and stuff, and I know you're getting the cardio in, so I'm sure the weight's falling off a little bit. And you have, you know, this isn't like last time where it was a real short notice fight. You've had some notice, so I imagine the cut's going well, especially at 141. Yeah, easily. If I had if something happen and something came up and I had to make bantam weight, I could also make bantam weight. There you go. Um, I'm in a good position right now. However, I'm getting treated good downstairs at the buffet, so uh, <laughs> knowing I'm knowing I'm going 140 pounds, 141 pounds. I have been eating a little bit extra. I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't need to be 148, 150 pounds in the ring. I can be 155 pounds with this guy. And you know what? He, he he's fought featherweight. He picked Bubba Jenkins up and double leg Bubba Jenkins to the ground. Uh, he was in that fight with with Bubba. He had him in a couple of good spots. Like by by any means, Elias is not going to be. But be easy. He's not just going to fold for me. I got a fight on my hands. He's a live guy. But I do believe I'm better everywhere. And I believe moving forward with the fight IQ that I'm using now, uh, I can win this fight. I know I can win this fight, but uh, I can make it look good and have fun doing it. Uh, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? I was going to ask you that because you mentioned you're on your own right now. Are you have teammates coming down, or are you just uh, you just going to use someone that's there? Like, how are you, what's your corner situation looking like? Like I mentioned with Vlad, Vlad hooked me up with uh, Steven. Levasky. Oh, awesome! Oh, he's, so they'll uh, be in your corner American... as well. Yeah, he, he'll be in my corner. He's an American living in Dubai right now. The kid's 26 years old. I'll, I'll send you some video after. He's cornered uh, eight times in the UFC. Uh, there you go. He's got a lot of experience for his age. When I looked at his passport, I'm like, what the hell? This I thought he was fucking 30 years old, right? He's uh, <laughs> it's been everywhere. 26 years old. He's out here just holding pads and coaching people. I guess he came from uh, Tegger Muay Thai in Thailand. Which is one of the best in the world. Him. Yeah, that's a great camp. He's a world traveler, and uh, we've been talking a lot online and FaceTime over the last few months. So I, I, his spirit's strong, and I can already tell I trust him. and. Uh, I get to meet him on Monday, Tuesday. It's interesting, right? So I'm out here by myself. Maybe the biggest fight of my life on paper. And uh, yeah, I I, I know a couple people from online, but I don't know these people. Uh, Everyone I'm meeting, it's all new. So I'm really doing this by myself. It's it's intriguing. I, I like it. And I'm sure you're still FaceTiming back home with, you know, Cody, your brother, Curtis. I don't know if you, because those are sort of your, your staples as far as your crew goes, right? So I'm sure you're at least talking to them a little bit. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm coaching Curtis every day. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Curtis, the man, he's got a. He might have a scrap lined up too soon. Good, uh, good. I know he's been inactive a little bit, not by choice. I know there's been some injuries well, and some other stuff falling out. So good. I hope hope he gets back sucks, in there soon. Sucks in Canada, man. What are, what are we gonna do right now? Nobody's got the money to do to do uh, shows without uh, without a crowd. It's true. And uh, the government stepping in on top of these commissions. What are, what are you going to do, right? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, how's this fight playing out on January 15th? It's going to be good. I'm going to have long punches, long straight punches, and I'm going to be very patient. I'm going to look to hurt him early and then uh, finish him. That's I, I'm not going to be happy with anything except a finish. You know, I, uh, I'm not looking to go decision. Um it sounds cliche when a fighter says this, but I've improved again. This is the best version of myself that's been to date. So uh, I'm excited to get in there and do battle with another world-class fighter. And uh, my left hand will land, and I will break him down in the first round and uh, look to maybe get on top of him in the second and look for the finish. We'll see how it plays out. But uh, I'm going to be very, very, very smart and uh, – I'm going to use my straight punches, break them down, and then go in for the kill. Now, are you sticking around after the fight? Because obviously Holloway uh, uh, caters the next night. Are you going to try and, I don't know if you can go to the event. You know, you mentioned Vlad. He's got some hookups. Are you going to try and go to that fight or at least like stick around and maybe watch it just being there? Or are you heading right back home? No, I'm actually here. I'm here till end of February, man. I'm there you go. Here. There you go. Smart right move. Yeah, smart move, smart move. I, I, like I said, my medicals are in, and uh, 
I'm willing and ready. And if UFC needs anybody on short notice, uh, we've put ourselves in a position to uh, be ready for this. But at the same time, I cannot look past Elias. This is a huge fight in my st- my stage in my career and how things have gone. It seems to be always life or death for me, right? So I like that. I do good with my back against the wall. And uh, next Friday night, it's no prisoners, man. It's war. It's life or death. Uh, I'm going to... I got big plans, man. I'm going to fold them up and put them away. There's no doubt. Everything could be coming together, man. By the way, kudos to you and your management for coming up with that strategy because you know what? You stay on weight. The UFC, how many times have they had issues with COVID and all this stuff? If you're on standby, you're already there. A guy who's got the experience that you do, I mean, that's putting yourself, putting you in a very good position, man. And I know you got the fight on the 15th, but still, that's still a good spot to be in right now, uh, you know, to be just there, right? Because not every fighter can just hop on a plane and go to Abu Dhabi, especially with all the testing, right? 100%. 100%. And they don't got crazy medical suspensions out here either. Right. And I don't plan on getting hurt. I plan on doing the hurting, right? So. Good stuff. Jesse, I'm so pumped for this, man. It's coming up here January 15th. UAE Warriors 15. There's nothing else going on that night, so no excuse for your MMA fans uh, not, not checking that one out. Uh, as always, man, just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media. And if you got any thank yous or shout outs, I'll give you the last word. Jesse Arnett on Instagram. Uh, Jesse Arnett on Facebook. It's Big Cat. It's real on Twitter. I want to shout out MTK Global, MTK MMA, the best management, the best. They treat me like a brother. I want to shout out my brother from another mother, my my manager, Rizvan. This guy is phenomenal, man. The relationship I've built with this man over the last few months, he's he's more than just a manager for me. You know, I, I can tell he really cares, and he, he puts a lot of time into his job. This guy's on. Uh, this guy's up twenty four seven, or he's on North American time because he's dealing with all his, all his uh, talent all over the world. And uh, I really admire his work ethic. And everyone, Carl at MTK, uh, MTK has really been pushing me on social media, and they uh, they got a lot of UFC fighters, they got a lot of Bellator fighters, and uh, I'm definitely feeling the love from MTK. Big shout out to Robin Hahn too, Built three sixty, day one had my back.